Hello, let's practice drawing Bohr diagrams together. So here is the chart from our handbook, and we'll start by looking at the ninth element in the chart, the one called fluorine. So I'm going to zoom in on the spot that we're going to work on, right about here. Now we can look up in a periodic table the details for fluorine that we'll be using. First of all, We'll fill out the title here, fluorine. We'll give it symbol F, and its atomic number is nine. So let's think. That atomic number tells us about what parts this atom has. So it will have nine protons. It's going to have, so we can look this up in our periodic table. We can take a look at its atomic mass. Okay, so here we have the value for fluorine. Its atomic mass is 19. So we see that here. Its atomic number is 9. So if we do 19 minus 9, that will give us 10, uh, or that means 10 neutrons. Okay, let's go back up to our workspace here. We have 10 neutrons, and we assume that this is a neutral atom, so it must also have 9 electrons. Okay, now we're ready to get into the drawing itself. One of the most important ideas describing the location of electrons around the nucleus of an atom has to do with energy. Electrons always find the orbit or the shell of lowest energy that they can fit in, at least if there's an empty spot there. So when we start adding electrons to a nucleus, we always want to start from the lowest shell or the shell that is closest to the nucleus, because that shell will have the lowest energy. So in total, we're going to place nine electrons around this nucleus. So let's begin with this first shell. So we can place one electron here and one electron here. So this shell can handle up to two electrons maximum. And once you've hit two, this shell is now full and no more can fit in there. So we need to add in more electrons, which means we have to go out to the next shell, because that is now the shell with the lowest energy level. So let's see, we're going to have to add seven more electrons. When we draw it, it's helpful if you draw it in an order kind of like this. The first electron we'll place here. The second electron We'll place as far away as possible in that same shell. The third electron, the fourth electron. Okay. So notice how these electrons are all spaced out. Electrons do repel one another and they try to get as far away from each other as possible. But there's actually more spots available in this particular shell for the last three electrons. And something really nifty happens the electrons begin to pair up. So even though they repel each other, they are able to get into a very close position or close orbital with the others that are there. And this happens for reasons that we've not yet learned, but it's part of an important pattern that we're starting to explore here. So let's add in our three more electrons. We'll add in one more so paired up with this one here. We'll add in one more paired up with this one here. We'll add in another paired up with this one here. Okay. And so now, aside from the funny looking blobs that I've drawn, we have an excellent Bohr diagram. 